This is One on One. For the first time here at the Tisch WNET studios, we have uh, Jamie Ritchie, President and Chief Executive Officer, Americas and Asia, Sotheby's Wine. How are you doing? Doing well, thank you. Now, who knew that Sotheby's was into wine? It's uh, big. We've, we've been into wine for a while. With 1970, we started in London, 1994 here, and 2009 in Hong Kong. Explain to us the whole wine thing. First of all, why is Sotheby's into wine? Like, what, do people come in and auction off wine? So, yes, exactly. So, so people collect wine. Um, they generally, um, yeah, we have four reasons why they would sell it. Death, debt, divorce, and uh, the fourth one would be doctor's orders for wine. <laughs> um, and, uh, and people build collections of wine, and they generally, yeah, they, they buy more than they need to drink. Uh, it's readily available every day. It's fun. There's a new vintage. There's a new producer. And, uh, and then people realize that they can't possibly consume as much as they've collected. So. Who collects? Uh, it's a wide range of people. There are the aficionados, connoisseurs who love it. There are people who invest in it. Um, there are people, yeah, like me, I just drink it. Um, and so it's a, it's a wide range of people. In terms of where the market's gone, um, it was really originally just European bars. And then North America, from 1994, when the laws changed here, allowing wine auctions to take place, uh, the North American bar became the least price sensitive. Um, and that really ran through mid-2008. Um, and then when Lehman Brothers collapsed, the market yeah, went down significantly, probably by about 40%. Direct correlation between the Lehman situation and the prices of wine dropping dramatically? Yes, well, it, it was a build-up. So we started seeing the market fading in uh, North America from mid-2008, and then Lehman Brothers was the catalyst. So prices went down about 40% post that. But what happened um, at the same time was we saw in January 2009 the Asian buyers um, uh, becoming very aggressive and mostly driven by mainland Chinese buying for the first time. And really, so since that point in time, the, the least price sensitive bar has been the Asian bar. Set this up for us. For those of us who see wine mostly as um, something that, you know, we use to go out to dinner, and those of us who have very limited palates, right? Um, oh, you know, everyone, everyone, everyone's got their taste what they like. Okay, so you, you were told that I'm a big Pinot Grigio drinker, and so you were nice enough to bring this in for me. Right? Yep. We'll share with our team a little bit later on. And by the way, what is this? It's a Poggio Allegazzi, so it's mostly Sauvignon Blanc, um, but it's quite full and rich, but with a good acidity. Now, a wine like this would go for? Uh, $50. $50. Now, here's the thing. What is so hard for some of us to understand is that at Sotheby's, your place, some of these wine auctions, you're talking about wines that go from what to what? Because when I saw the numbers on the high end, it just was mind boggling. Put sure. it in perspective. Uh, sure. I mean, I mean, yeah, everyone likes to report, including uh, us or, or what gets reported in the press, is always the highest prices. Yeah. Um, and so we, we would sell what, bottles of wine at auction from $25 to uh, through all the way up until... What are we looking at right now there? Uh, we're looking at a bottle of uh, 1869 Lafitte. 1869. 1869 Lafitte. Now, is that supposed to mean something to... It means something to you, obviously. Sure. It was a great year. Um, it was a great year, it, it okay. Great year. And so we actually sold um, three bottles of 1869 Lafitte, which came directly from the sellers of Lafitte in Bordeaux. And we sold them in Hong Kong in uh, uh, 2010. Um, and they sold for $233,000 each to the same bar. That's no, 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 no. Back up, back up, back up. $233,000 each to the same buyer. Yes, so $700,000. So so that's what gets reported, and so that's why our reputation is always for selling wines at that price. But yeah, we go down to $25. We have a retail store, which is new for us um, here in the city, um, and that starts at $13.95. Okay, uh, let's show the shot of the uh, store itself, if we can do that. You got a heck that's, of a place there. That's our headquarters. That's, well, that's not all the retail store. We'd love it to be. <laughs> <laughs> that's our store. How'd you get into this? Um, you know what? What uh, is your story? Um, I, was, I grew up um, in England. And uh, I remember my father serving me glass. That's not a Brooklyn accent? Yeah, it's, I'm working on it. <laughs> um, I started drinking wine. You know, my parents started serving me wine when I was 13, 14. And I remember bottles of wine that my father served me then. So when I was working, I was studying law, like your previous guest. <laughs> What's up with the law thing? <laughs> and, uh, and I realized I wasn't really interested in law. And so in, in England, uh, I wanted to be an actor too. So a failed actor becomes a barrister. And then my view is like a fell barrister becomes an auctioneer. So the acting role is just reduced a little bit each time. But yeah, I liked the wine. I was um, interested in it. I went to work in bars and restaurants, and people saw that I was interested in wine. They encouraged me. I went on some wine courses. 
Um, the, the art of the being an auctioneer, some of us who, who do charity work, who have been pulled into doing live auctions are just panicked because we think we know what to do on a microphone because we do this and you realize it is not the same thing. We are out of our element and we stink at it. And I look at people like you and I go, how do they do it? How do you do it? It's, you know, actually the benefit auctions are much tougher. I did one last night um, and it, it went well because yeah, with a commercial auction that we run, we're in control of it. We source the property. That is me. We source the property um, and, we, and we sell it. Uh, with a benefit auction, and they're very tough because we don't source it, you just stand up there and you do it. But the most important thing with an auction is to know who's bid and then to go back to them. Most people, you know, most I'm not professional auctioneers will just look around the room. But you've got to go back to your previous bars and get them to bid again. Um, so that's all. You have to know your audience. You've got to know your audience, but you've also got to, know, got to remember who bid and because the most person most likely to bid next is that same person who just bid. Really? And do you feel the pressure to have to get that number up to a certain number because you know what the perceived or expected value is of a certain wine. Sure, I mean, it certainly helps to know the market, to know your clients, to know the value of the wines and to know what the expectations are. Man, you love this. You were born to do this, right? Uh, I enjoy it, it's a lot of fun. I had the last guest who's born to do his thing, right? With the Legos, yeah. you're born to do this. Yeah, it's, uh, I love tasting wine, I love talking about it, I love selling it. Okay, so the, here's the, the last thing before I let you out of here. Uh, I often tell people that the wine I like is uh, a certain kind of, let's just say, Santa Margarita, which is the kind that is overrated in a lot of people's mind. You know what it is. Yeah, I know what it is. I know yeah. what it is. I'm not even going to say the brand. And it's like $20, $25 a bottle. Yep. Do you think that most people can tell the difference between that bottle of wine, a $15 bottle of wine, or 10 or 12 and a really expensive bottle of wine? Most of us who do not have a trained palate. Loaded question, I know. Yeah, I, I, I think generally speaking, if you serve someone a really good wine, everyone goes like, wow, that's really good. And you say, They do. Yeah, they do. I mean, Even when we don't know. Yeah, exactly. Is it what? Smoother? What is it? Yeah, it, it's, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's a combination of smoother, concentrated, it has great length. Um, it's sort length? Of, what length, is that? Length, length. So, so the, the taste doesn't disappear immediately, it stays with you. You can taste it after you know, a minute after you've stopped drinking it. And the fact that I drink white wine, and I have not tried red, makes me what? Uh, enjoyable, enjoying <laughs> white wines. But I need to expand it. We need to expand ourselves, but, but, don't we? But that's the great thing with wine. And there's never been a better time to, to enjoy wine because what, how they produce wine nowadays and what they know about it is, means that $20, you get great wine. Jamie Ritchie, you've taught us a lot and wish you nothing but the best. But, but the best. President and Chief Executive Officer over at Sotheby's uh, Wine for the Americas and Asia, doing great stuff. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Uh, this is, uh, see, at Lincoln Center here at uh, Tish WNT Studio. Fascinating people. Good stuff. We'll be right back right after this. One on One with Steve Adubato has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating 25 years of broadcast excellence in partnership with St. Joseph's Healthcare System. Funding has been provided by Hackensack University Health Network, NJ Best, New Jersey's 529 College Savings Plan, TD Bank, Horizon Blue Cross Blue Shield of New Jersey, New Jersey Manufacturers Insurance Group, Cone Resnick, and by PSE&G. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area. One-on-one -on -one with Steve Adubato has been made possible in part by Celgene.